On today's episode of Watch JR Go, we are here with my 2002 Saturn SC2, and today we're gonna put the transmission back in this thing with a brand new clutch. What is going on, guys? I am Watch JR Go, and as you remember, yesterday we tore this thing apart. We got the transmission out, we pulled out the clutch, we found out the clutch plate itself, like the metal had come out of the spring dampener and caused it to just completely seize up and stop working. And we pulled the flywheel out because I figured the flywheel would be trash. Uh, I was wrong, the flywheel's fine. But uh, unfortunately, I had already bought a kit that came with everything. So we've got all new hydraulics, we've got a new clutch plate, we got a new pressure plate, we got a new throwout bearing, and we have a new flywheel. So everything is here to make this thing brand new. So here's all those parts. They're sitting right over here on the floor. Uh, this box is the complete hydraulic system with a uh, new master reservoir. It's a sealed system. Here we've got our new flywheel uh, ready to open that up. Anyway, it'll be nice to have a new flywheel. You can't beat new parts. And here we've got our pressure plate and our clutch. Let's go ahead and get this thing open because Obviously the flywheel needs to go back in the car first. So the flywheel torques to 59 foot-pounds. Man, let's go ahead and set these beside each other. Engineered in USA. That's how you know it wasn't made in the USA. So we're ready to go ahead and mount that flywheel. And after we do that, we're gonna wipe all this stuff down with brake clean because it's got shipping oil all over it. So that'll clean everything up. This is the factory flywheel. Still, I mean, it's in great shape. Nothing wrong with that at all, but hey, I'm here for the new one. And uh, our new clutch disc looks much better. So this looks like it was probably replaced and there's a uh, non self-adjusting one. This one is supposed to be the OEM self-adjusting one. I wanted to make sure we were putting OEM parts back and this one's in, oh, it's way, way, way thicker. So this one did run for a while, but yeah. Look how, look at the difference in thickness right there. I mean, there's a 16th of an inch at least. So I'm excited for this. Hopefully we're driving this thing by the end of the day. Get this thing hoisted up in here. And of course, in the last video, we did check out the rear main and confirm that it's in pretty darn good shape. So what we're gonna end up doing here, let's make sure there's not like a mark or anything. We'll just see if the bolt holes line up. And if they do, we're gonna send it. So. Yeah, it seems like they're all just going right in. So we're gonna drop in all these bolts. Of course, they're fine threads, so they screw in forever and ever and ever. I'm gonna grab the cordless ratchet, tighten these down, and then we have the torque wrench ready to go at uh, 59 foot-pounds to final torque these things. Okay. Okay, here we go. Time to torque down the flywheel. Wow, this is gonna be torque. All right, quick coating of brake clean to the pressure plate. We'll do the same thing to the flywheel too. Make sure there's no shipping oil on here. I know they don't want it to rust. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pop the entire arm off of here for the uh, throwout bearing. Oh, cool, it just slides in and snaps in there. Nice. And I'm gonna put this in the parts washer and clean it up. Might as well. Everything else in there looks pretty reasonable. There's no play in anything. Oh yeah, she feels solid. So we've got our uh, clutch release fork here and there's the old throwout bearing. Uh, this is actually a really cool design. It just slides in. Like that's it. That's how the throwout bearing goes in. And there's the new bearing, what a bearing should look like. It's got some nice tension on it. This one is probably original because a pretty good sign it's been in there forever. So there's our old one, and I'm gonna take some of this spline lube and shoot it into the little ball retainer that holds this thing in. And all we have to do is snap this thing onto the ball. Ready to go. So we've got our clutch alignment tool hanging out in here, and new clutch is sitting on the pressure plate so I don't have to touch it, and we are ready to get this thing in here. I also took all the bolts over to the parts washer, cleaned them up, now, there's no way I can put this in with the tool in there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put the, yeah, there's not enough room for the tool, that's for sure. Now we don't quite have enough room to work with here. So I'm gonna have to bump the transmission over and out of the way 
and then I can get this thing to actually kind of line up and we can start tightening it down. Uh, let's put like one bolt in here so this thing doesn't fall on my head. Always smart to have one bolt keeping it from falling on your head. So we have our clutch alignment tool in there. If you take a look at where that's sitting, we've got a nice bite. That means it went all the way in. Uh, it actually sits flush with the fingers on the pressure plate there. So that thing, you'll feel like a nice click when it engages. That's basically the best way to say that. And now I just need to get all of these holes lined up and then we can start evenly torquing down the actual pressure plate. All right, we have enough of these things started. I've got five of the bolts in. I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening this thing down. That way uh, I can rotate the flywheel and do the other one easily. So we'll have to make a couple passes around this thing to make sure it's all evenly tightened down. There's 19. And I'll try to kind of cross torque them at the same time. At least 19 is super easy to hit. So we've got the flywheel back on, pressure plate on, clutch, everything's assembled, lined up. So now we are ready to put the transmission back in its place. So I'm gonna try to just manhandle it in, get the dowels lined up, I think this can be done super easily because the transmission doesn't weigh much. So here we go. Oh, there's a bunch of tension up from the wires and stuff up there. Oh. All right, <laughs> we're getting close. Uh, it looks like the thing needs to rotate towards me a lot. That's basically it for the transmission mount. And we've got half of this thing back together in like three minutes. I'm kind of surprised. All right, it is time to start putting this thing back together on top here. So we're gonna flip that transmission mount bracket back into place and start putting all these bolts back in. This shouldn't take too long at all, honestly. It didn't take that long to tear this thing down. So I assume uh, it'll just take us, you know, an hour or something to put the whole thing back together. And then we need to go get fluid for it. And one thing that's going to be fun is flipping these shifter cables that are buried down in there so that I can get them back where they belong. Also, all of this is going to go in the trash because obviously we have a whole new clutch assembly front to back. Every little bit of this thing. There it goes. Okay, so we got the reservoir coming off. And now, better disconnect the brake fluid level. That way, it'll make this easier to get out. All right, so now we should be able to just Give it a little twist and a pull. And I went ahead and went inside and disconnected it already. It's just a single quick disconnect clip to get this out. We got it. Now we have to kind of somehow put that all back, which I think we need to do in the reverse order. <laughs> Why you gotta do this to me, Saturn? Why you gotta do me like this? Just need to rotate it. Boom. And we'll slide the reservoir on here. Hook up our brake reservoir again. And that is replacing the clutch hydraulics. All right, now it's time to install the clutch slave, which is way harder than the master even. There it goes. Wow, okay, it's not that hard at all. Uh, taking that out was a nightmare. Putting it back together was super duper easy for some reason. And now that the slave is in place, we just have to throw these two bolts back on, two nuts back on, and they hold this plate, which is a junction box for the hydraulics. I don't know why that exists. Don't know what they were thinking, but hey, we got it back in there and we should have a clutch, so I'm gonna uh, test this thing out, run in there and push it a couple times just to see if it feels like we've got a clutch. Here comes our clutch test. I don't know if it works or not, but we're gonna hope and pray that it does. <laughs> I kind of think, so when I pushed on the clutch pedal there was a huge pop and there was some resistance first. I feel like this breaks on purpose. So maybe this was always supposed to be broken and it's just there for shipping and then it stays there to protect the uh, cylinder itself. 
so maybe it's supposed to break i don't know there were two big pops now we're down to the shifter cables and a couple of connectors here and uh basically just kind of plugging in everything so i've got a reverse indicator on the back of the trans speed sensor this is probably reverse and then the speed sensor and the cables and we're ready to shove the cvs back in and just put everything back in place so there is not much left at all at this point put it all back in the same way you took it out it's time to torque our axle nut we got this set to 148 foot pounds <laughs> i don't have that kind of power i need robot arms you would if you had robot ears mm. this is gonna kill somebody look at the whole pry bar brain bending Woo! all right Back together, now for the other side. Luckily, these aren't even staked or anything like that. So that's it, that's the axle nut torque. Uh, now I've gotta tighten the struts down and we're done. We're ready to put the wheels back on it, so. So you need a seven to hook the computer back up. Here's the PCM. Helps if you put the ratchet in drive. doesn't need to be too tight or anything like that. And you're ready to slot the ECU back in. Put this connector back on the ECU, which just slide the blue out, push the connector on, slide the blue in, and it's done. And now, somewhere around here, I got the two bolts for the ECU. These are 10s. And we're ready to put a battery back in this car. Not bad time at all. I'm pretty proud of this job. Got it done in record time. I figured we'd check the air filter and the air filter actually looks incredible. So I'm a little impressed. And also one of the cool, crazy things about this car, I don't know which one it is, but these look like hose connections and they're not. These are power connections. So this is the intake air temp right there. And it's keyed and it's really hard to plug in and it has this this is the connector. So you have to kind of wiggle and push and don't be wrong because uh, you don't get too many chances to put this back together. So I think it goes like that right there. There it is. In we go. Last piece of the puzzle here. Okay, well, it's hard to find the original GM Synchro Mesh, but O'Reilly's has the Valvoline stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw this in there so we can have the amber manual transmission fluid. It doesn't matter. I know there's gonna be a bunch of comments about it that uh, it, the actual spec is just ATF, but this is MTF, even better. What up, Brady? Hold on. All right, we got three liters, 2.5 liters is the spec. Let's go fill this thing up. So the fill port for this transmission is straight down behind the ECU. And I'm telling you, good luck. Hey, I made it, didn't even miss. Okay, so the funnel is in here now and it is probably ruined. Getting a funnel into this took squishing it 100%. But at least we can get fluid in this. The really nice thing is this is a super easy bottle to squeeze. So we're just about there. I'm gonna put in just two quarts. I would assume that we have at least a half quart left sitting in the bottom of the trans. If you ever had to do this on the roadside and it was hot, I'd say you're in trouble. Okay. And we're on the tip of it. Definitely, it says add pint. Eh, we're actually right there. We're on the fill. Okay, we're good. When that heats up, it's definitely good. Okay, it's time to get this thing off the lift. We can kick the arms out, drop the hood. Check the oil, we're good to go now. Um, I am pretty excited to see if this clutch works uh, because if it doesn't, <laughs> mistakes were made. It'll be a huge job to try to fix that, but I think we'll be just fine. Just about to the bottom of the lift. There's that. Also, for some reason, the arm here, the, the hood prop, this is like the wrong hood prop for this car. I don't know what's going on here. I really. Like it's not supposed to sit like that, but oh well. Time to try it out.
cars around, but I think we're ready to take this out for a drive. Driving the SC2 for the first time. They're really annoying with no exhaust. We're gonna uh, just go to an exhaust shop and have them put a straight pipe in there. But it's got a clutch. And the window doesn't go up. Oh, look at that. There it, goes. it just wanted driven. That's what it wanted. I was like, man, I really want to go to the car wash, but window won't move. Some dumb kids out there with their uh, straight pipe for race cars. That was 4,000 RPM. <laughs> All right, I got to stop. It's so much fun. It's got pop pops. <laughs> this is every kid's modern dream. It's basically the same thing as a Focus ST. Pop pops. It's, uh, oh yeah, it needs gas too. Clutch engagement still feels a little weird. It needs driven more. <laughs> At uh, 4,500 for some reason, it's like rev limiting. Out driving it, radio works, heat works. Oh yeah, the blower fan needs replaced. You can hear that, that chirping was coming from it. <laughs> it's only a five speed though. Well, that's kind of weird. But uh, anyway, cruising down the road. No cruise, no speedometer, weird. I just noticed the speedometer is not moving. Uh, there was an extra connector sitting on top of the engine that was never plugged in before. I better look at that. So we do need to sort out the speedometer, but I'd say that's it for this car. Ready to roll. And it, whoever buys it should put a new window switch in. Ah, oh, the pop pops. <laughs> it sounds just like that kid with the Focus RS that does this every day for like 12 minutes while he passes my warehouse. Nothing but pop pops. He gets on it way before the warehouse and then just so many pop pops. It runs great though. Now we've got good power. I kind of hate to beat on my brand new clutch, but. Well, there you have it. That's how you do a clutch in a Saturn SC2. And it's honestly a pretty simple job that you'll probably enjoy doing. That was pretty fun. So uh, really one day in and out, shouldn't be any problem at all. And if you have a lift, it's much, much easier. Uh, weirdly, there's just some connector that's unplugged for that speed sensor. So I'll have to chase that down. But that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjarego.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. Heat worked, the radio worked, the wipers worked, lights worked. I mean, almost everything on this car worked as we expected. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, just needs a couple little things touched up and she's good to go down the road. And it looks good. It's a good looking car. Check that thing out. After washing all the dirt off it, uh, it looks a little more damaged because you can now you can see all these little marks on the door and stuff. But it's a cool car, fun to drive.